Welcome to Loomshot, my name is Eric. I hope you guys enjoyed that bureau sequence and glimpse into what the completed mod looks like. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and bell icon to be notified when I post new videos like this. So today's video is in collaboration with Crystal Times Horology, who sent in their CT707 case for me to build on. And before we jump into the build process, this watch is for sale, which I'll further explain later on in the video, so make sure you stick around until the end. Okay, so let's take a look at how I built this Comet mod. Alright, so as usual, I like to start on the movement. We'll be using the NH36 for this mod, which is manufactured by Seiko Instruments. And just in case you didn't know, it's exactly the same as the 436, just branded differently by Seiko. Now before anything is done, I make sure the caliber is operating properly, like checking the natural date change, quick set, and the timekeeping. This movement was pre-regulated and running like a happy chap, so we can move on to the assembly. I'm removing the day complication from the NH36 since we won't be needing it for the particular dial I chose. This way, there won't be a ghost day function when setting the watch later on, which isn't necessary, but I wanted to do this extra step. Now I know I could have just used the NH35, but I like starting from my NH36 since you can always remove a day function, but can't add one as easily to the NH35 simply because you need extra parts. Now this is the dial for the build, it's an OEM Seiko part with a really cool texture and gradient finish from blue to black. There's also another cool feature being the dual tone loom, so this dial has both blue and green glowy action. I checked the bridges prior to installing the dial since we won't have access to it later on, and gave a final test to make sure the day change occurs smoothly. I'm kinda obsessive about checking as I build, same goes with the cleaning as you can see here as I clean the dial and indices in preparation for the handset. You can never be too clean. So this is the newer sumo style handset I'll be using but first, the movement is slowly set to exactly 12am so that the day change happens as the minute hand crosses over. The hour hand is set into place with my gold plated brass tweezers, then installed with the hand setter. Spacing is checked up close and the hand is cleaned and given a final check to ensure it is exactly at the center of 12. Next comes the minute hand which follows the same steps. It's set into place, aligned up, installed with the hand setter, checked for its spacing, cleaned up from any imperfections, and tested to ensure alignment is perfect with the hour hand. Last comes the second hand which is oriented with my tweezers and installed with the setter. Being ambidextrous, I'm able to utilize both tools here at once. Precise control over pressure is essential since I hold the second hand from its side to prevent any chance of marring the polished flats. Now that all three hands are set, checked and cleaned, the operation of the movement as a whole is looked over. Of course, the dial is also given another clean to ensure it's free from any dust. Working our way out, this is the new CT707 case which features the crown at 3 with no crown guards. I always give the case a good clean prior to putting on the chapter ring and the particular one chosen for this build is brushed stainless steel. It's dropped into place, then comes the crystal gasket and of course it's all cleaned up. Now the crystal is double dome sapphire with clear AR since I want that dial to be as clear as possible. The crystal is first aligned into place as evenly as possible by hand, then pushed in with my version 6173, which is basically a super calibrated assist made arbor press to put it very simply. On the tool, the crystal is aligned up, given a final check, then pushed in slowly. I like to perform a rotational check just to be safe, but it really isn't necessary with this tool given how precise it is. Regardless, it's a good practice to follow just in case. Now the seating is given a thorough check after being pressed in, then clean for any dust. Believe me, this step alone takes longer than all of the other steps combined. It's so important to have a clean watch, so much that I keep a separate case of Rodico and a bunch of other tools just for crystals. Anyways, here comes my favorite part, the casing. This step always gets me excited since the watch starts to take shape. Once they're married, the case is temporarily close up to install the bezel mechanism and I chose to use an oyster style bezel for this mod. The gasket is lubricated, put into the bezel, then set onto the case. Here I always give a few rotations to check the action because if it's too loose or tight, not like that guys, I disassemble the bezel work to fine tune its tolerances. Now comes the crown, which in this case is specifically designed to be used with this case. Hmm. 
I'm running out of words. It guarantees 200 meters of resistance and I really like how it pairs up. The stem is put into my virgin pin vise, cut the size, leveled off and cleared from any burr since it could potentially cause cross threading. Of course, yeah, you guys probably expected this by now. To be safe, the crown stem assembly is fixed into place with some Loctite, then the gasket is lubricated of course. Once the assembly is joined to the movement, I check its operation so it's winding, time setting, quick set function, and most importantly, ensuring that the crown screws in all the way down to the case. Once that's done, the case back gasket is lubricated and the underside is given a thorough clean. We'll be using a sapphire display case back, which is 200 meter water resistant, and after giving a final check from start to finish, the back is tightened up with my version 5700. Now the only part left is the bezel insert, which is a loom ceramic bezel insert that I believe will tie the entire design together. I'll be using the double sided adhesive this time as some of you guys requested me to show the best way to use this surprisingly tricky thing. I'm not sure about the best, but quickly this is how I do it. I take the entire adhesive off with my tweezers, carefully line it up to the insert, give it a light back massage, peel off the towel, I mean paper, then install it onto the bezel itself. Anyways, all of the parts are now installed, so let's take a detailed look at this Comet mod. So here's the completed build. I came up with this design while learning about astrophotography because I saw this incredible picture of a comet going across space. After seeing that image, I wanted to incorporate the same hues of blues and black into a custom build, so that's how the comet mod came to fruition. It's also a nice companion to the Blow Moon mod, which if you haven't seen already, I'll link a video somewhere up here. Now I always get asked about the specifications for the custom watches that I build, so here's a quick breakdown. The comet mod has a 42mm diameter, 22mm lug width, 46 lug to lug, around 17 thickness, so it's basically the same as the standard SKX or SRPD5KX. Key features would be the NH movement which hacks and hand winds, double dome sapphire crystal with clear anti-reflective coating, sapphire display case back, and loom ceramic bezel insert. Another feature would be the lack of crown guards which makes for a very clean and sleek look. It's reminiscent of vintage divers and I really like this look, especially with this sign crown which was specifically designed to be used with this case. One of the highlights of the piece that I spent a lot of time considering is the loom because, well, I am loom shot, right? The common mod has dual tone loom, meaning it has both green and blue loom. The OEM dial has both types of loom on it, the handset has green loom being C3, and the insert has blue loom BGW9. During the design process, it was important to find a good balance between the two colors, which I think was accomplished. So as I mentioned earlier, this model is for sale, but I can only guarantee 10 in this exact same configuration because parts are limited. For purchase and pricing details, please shoot me an email, I'll leave it on the screen, in the description and pinned at the top of the comments below. Anyways, that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Follow me on Instagram at loom underscore shot and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.